Today I'm in the mood to melt a butterfly. Wanna join me? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, this is Louise Heinzel. Welcome to this video. Nice to see you here today. As promised, I'm going to show you how I made the focal point for my fluffy Halloween grunge journal, which I've created for the Tim Holtz Ideology Halloween 2023 release. If you've never heard about this journal and want to know more about it, then please check out the info box. I've put together some links that you can watch parts of my process and other things around this journal. So let's go into this. I have taken a paper doll and some bat wings and a transparent butterfly. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to emboss the paper doll with frosted crystal embossing powder. That is a really, yeah, as the name says, frosty embossing powder. It gives a really nice texture. It's matte in the end. And I think for Halloween projects or anything else where you need a really nice matte texture, this is the perfect embossing powder. This looks just amazing. Um, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm taking the bat wings and I take my fingernail tool. <laughs> And going into the layers of this material to make that a little bit grungy on the one hand and more interesting on the other hand. So basically I'm separating the layers of this material. That is really easy. If you don't want to use your fingernail, then of course you could also take a sharp knife, for example, or, you know, one of these craft knives or something else, um, even a really thin spatula would work i guess um, i have crumpled that up a little bit and now i'm adding some water and next i want to use some distress spray stain this is the color ground espresso because uh, yeah it's in my color palette for this journal you could also use another brown or even any other color of course and i'm going into these little damages that i've just made to yeah color them on the one hand and to let them look a little bit burnt on the other hand that's also the reason why i've used ground espresso that is really dark and a really intense dark brown and with these bat wings it, it's it's just amazing <laughs> it's it looks so so cool and yeah it looks burnt in the end and that was one of the goals that i had here the water just helps to let the ink go into the material a little bit better. And as you can see, I'm applying that directly with the nozzle of the spray bottle. You could also, of course, take a small paintbrush or another tool, a Q-tip or something like that. I'm drying this with my heat gun so that I'm able to hold the bed wings behind the paper doll to see if everything is, yeah, you know, how I want it to be. And I think this is a really, really nice contrast. This brown, which looks nearly like burnt with fire, and this black and white look of the paper doll. I really like this combination. Next, I'm going to take some collage medium to apply a thin layer of that to the bat wings. On the one hand, that makes them matte. I wanted to have a contrast between the transparent, glossy butterfly wings, these matte bat wings, and the texture of the frosted crystal embossing powder. And I think that turned out really, really nice. And I was also able with this step of applying the collage medium to glue some of those loose pieces. I've just bent them around, as you can see here, hold that down with my tweezers for a moment so that the collage medium can yeah, grab this. And then you can see the layers better. Next, I'm going to take my transparent butterfly and a soldering iron because I want to make some really grungy holes into this transparent layer. So basically, I'm melting my butterfly now. <laughs> Perhaps you have seen some other creators doing this technique. To me, this was totally new. I have done that for the first time here for this project. But I have to say, this was really, really easy. Yeah, I, I, I think there's no second thing in this world that I have ever done for the first time that was so easy like this. I know that some people also use those um, wood, wood, oh, 
Luise, wood burning tools. You know those uh, tools where you can write something on wood or you make those patterns which are then burned into the wood. Mm, I know that it works with such a tool as well. I don't have that. So I um, have <laughs> actually I have asked my neighbor if I can have his soldering iron for a moment <laughs> and he was so kind to give it to me. That was really cute. So thank you, Fritz. Um, Yeah, but um, that doesn't matter. Um, you can also use a wood burning tool, but I have the feeling, but um, I can't compare it directly because I don't have a wood burning tool. Yeah, but I have the feeling that wood burning tools are way more uncontrollable. They get hotter, I guess, than a soldering iron or than this soldering iron. I have seen people melting those transparent things and it went really really quickly into the material so i have the feeling that a soldering iron is the better solution but it works with a wood burning tool as well so that's what i'm trying to say here um, if you are afraid of using such a hot tool please just calm down it's so so easy you can um, of course you have to be careful that you don't burn yourself yeah but that was it was just like in the kindergarten it was really really easy <laughs> so what i'm trying to say here try out new things and even if you haven't used a tool yet just try it of course be careful when it's hot or sharp or something like that but Just go for it and try it out and see if you like it. Yeah, that is really, really, I mean, we can get so much out of that uh, if we try new things and especially new tools that it's worth to try it. Yeah, don't burn yourself, but try it. <laughs> so next I'm gluing these layers on top of each other, even if this butterfly isn't finished yet. But I wanted to get an idea of the proportion of this whole thing. So I have clamped this door to, yeah, it's 99% the position that the door gets later to be able to see how big the butterfly can be on the left side. As you can see, it overlaps a lot. And that is way too much because, uh, I mean, if I had left it like this, I won't be able to open the journal later. This is way too far to the left. And I also wanted to have this really irregular. So I've planned it like this from the beginning, but um, I wasn't so sure how to get the right amount of the butterfly wing to the left part of this focal point so the easiest way for me was to just place the focal point there where it approximately will go later and then melt the rest of this thing or actually like yeah cut through the material with this soldering iron um, to be able to remove the rest of this butterfly wing i have taken my time for that as you can see here Mm, I have burned, no, mm, burned is I guess not the right word. I've melted a little bit through the material and then looked to it, tried to get an idea if that is enough. And then, you know, I've worked my way through this material uh, because when it's melted, it's away. Yeah, it, it's gone. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's not possible to get it back there. So do that carefully, especially when you want to remove such a bigger piece of, for example, a butterfly or something else. Mm, I wanted to have mm, a piece of this butterfly layer shown on the left side as well. That was the main challenge, I would say, because um, of the proportion of this, because... Um, You know, if I wanted to have the butterfly shown only on the right side, I could have just cut it in the middle in the very beginning and take the left piece for another project. But I thought that looks too unproportional. So I've tried to get a tiny little amount of the butterfly layer to the left of this focal point as well. And I've um, melted that there relatively extremely, as you can see. I've also went into this material like you know like there was a little slot or something but also here i've pressed the focal point to the position where it shall go later to be able to see how much i can take away or i have to take away especially here on this little 
um, area there, um, I had to be really careful because I had to take away some more of the material to be able to open the journal later, but I didn't want to melt too much. And I think it's a good idea to um, jump around on the project a little bit yeah so you can see i've worked a little bit on the left side then i went to the right side and did a little thing there then i went back to the left and so on to be able to yeah get a better idea of the end result and i've also taken this tool to melt the outer frame of this butterfly you can see i'm going into these yeah the shape of the butterfly actually to um yeah you could you could say to distress the edges of this um, if you do that really carefully and don't press too hard and don't wait too long then you can get a really really nice and rough edge to this material and <clears throat> what I also really enjoyed is um, my neighbor Fritz, who has given me the soldering iron, has used it with solder, yeah, it, before I got it, yeah. He used it for what it's meant to use. <laughs> so a little bit of this solder was still on this soldering iron and it came off while I melted these holes into the material and that gave these holes a really nice like distressed outline and that looks really really interesting in the end of this video you will see that in a little bit you know close-up shot that um, is definitely worth a try to take solder on purpose and um, not only the leftover from the iron and try to get that to this transparent layer i will definitely try that on another project but for this one i didn't want to have this silver color yeah there's a lot of gray on this um journal cover and also inside and i didn't want to overload the project with this grayish color and silver is gray to me somehow as well so hope that makes sense in the end i have also put this soldering iron to an angle to be able to burn really burn i always say burn or um, um, even i know that it's probably not the right word word to melt some really small details into this material so that it looks like aged and like mm, perhaps a little bit like eaten by a moth <laughs> do you know what i mean <laughs> So now this is what I have here. Later on, I've added also a tiny little bit of alcohol ink to this layer. But uh, this is already really, really interesting. I, and I really love this contrast between the glossy areas, these matte areas and the areas where the frosted crystal embossing powder is. That looks just so yummy. And yeah, I will also, of course, show you how this looks when it's finished. So that's the finished journal. As I said, if you want to know more about this journal, you can find some links listed down below in the description box. And you can also find links to the products that I have used here for this in the description box. I hope you liked it. See you the next time and have a very creative day. Bye bye.